Good evening and welcome to the League of Women Voters of Bellingham Whatcom County Forum for candidates for the Meridian School Board. My name is Jill Bernstein and I am very proud to be your moderator for this evening's conversation. The land that we stand on is the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Lummi and Nooksack people the original inhabitants of Washington's northernmost coast in southern British Columbia. Since time immemorial, they've celebrated and cared for their land and waters to perpetuate their way of life. Please join me in deep gratitude for their ongoing wisdom and guidance as we take a moment to honor their ancestors and acknowledge the past, present, and future Lummi and Nooksack people as the original inhabitants of this land. Our media partners for this evening are the Salish Current, the Ferndale Record, the Northern Light, the Linden Tribune, and KMRE 88.3 FM Community Radio. We thank them sincerely for their support. Founded in 1920, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. To that end, we work to increase understanding of major public policy issues and also influence public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses a candidate or a party. Membership is open to both men and women 16 years of age or older, and we invite all of you to join us. We say democracy is not a spectator sport. Membership information is available on our website. That's League of Women Voters, Bellingham, Whatcom County. But let's get started. Tonight's forum is for candidates for the Meridian School Board. There are two seats on the ballot this fall. Uh, each of which has two candidates. And before we get started, I'd like to introduce the candidates. For seat one, we have Corey Culp. Good evening, Mr. Culp. Good evening, thanks for having me. And uh, also running for that seat is Jana Haugen. However, Ms. Haugen notified us last night that she will not be attending our forum tonight. But present also for seat number five is Michelle Simmons. Good evening, Ms. Simmons. Good evening. Thank you for having me. And uh, Mr. Riley Sweeney. Hello, Mr. Sweeney. Good. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. The Meridian School Board consists of five citizens of the school district elected to a four-year term of office. Any adult resident may run for election to the board, providing they meet certain legal qualifications. By choice, Meridian School Board members serve without pay. For more information on school boards, visit the Washington State School Directors Association website. Meetings are held in the Meridian Learning Center, also referred to as the PD Room or Boardroom, at 194 West Laurel Road in Bellingham. Regular meetings begin at 6 p.m., and the schedule is available on the Meridian School District website. The school board represents a continuing commitment to local citizen control and decision making in education by establishing school district goals, providing for program development activities, overseeing the financial affairs of the district, adopting operating policies, assuring systemic review and evaluation of all phases of the school program, and advocating on behalf of all students and schools. Tonight, we're gonna to follow very specific rules for our forum. There will be no opening statements. Instead, the introductory question is tailored to elicit responses consistent with opening statements, and candidates will have a minute and a half to respond to each question, and then we'll make a one minute closing statement. The order of questions and closing statements was decided by seat alphabetically, and this will be rotated with every question. Each candidate also has a challenge card. Candidates, can you show your card? One, two, Mr. Mr. Culp, thank you. Candidates may use this card to challenge or rebut their opponent's response. The challenging candidate will have 
30 seconds to state the challenge, and his opponent will have 30 seconds to respond to the challenge. Each candidate may use their challenge card just one time. Our timer this evening is Judy Hopkinson, who will be keeping close and careful look at the time. The timer background will flash to yellow when there are 15 seconds left, and then to red when time is out. Our moderator will ask you to stop talking at that time if necessary. We ask that the candidates be respectful of the time allotted due to the limited amount of time that we have and our desire to include as many questions as possible. Members of the public were able to submit questions through the League of Women Voters of Bellingham, Whatcom County website up until today. And these questions were screened to ensure they were not duplicates and were appropriately addressed to both candidates. So, with the rules covered, let's get started. Timer, are you ready? Ready. Candidates, you will each have a minute and a half to respond to the question. And our first question is as follows. What is your vision for education in the district? And how will this vision support the economy and quality of life in the community? And we'll start with you, Mr. Culp. My vision of... Uh... I would say we need to start holding our schools, our kids, and our parents accountable and get our grades and our levels up. Because right now, after COVID, you know, most schools are down. And we just need to focus on that. And I think that how that helps the community, it creates a more vibrant youth to come out into the workforce and they're ready to be a part of this useful, this workforce. And that's that's what I how I see it. So okay, thank you. And Mr. Sweeney, how would you like to answer? Well, you know, people get involved with school board because they're excited about our schools and they want to make them an even better place. And and that's why I'm running, and that's my vision for the Meridian schools. So I'm a 20-year resident of Whatcom County. My oldest son goes to Irene Ryder Elementary and is having a great time. But the teachers and staff there, when I talk to them, they're hanging on by their fingertips. This has been a rough couple of years, as, as everybody knows. And our teachers are being asked to do more and more with less and less. So I'm running for school board. My vision for the Meridian Schools is to support our teachers. That means more hands in the classroom with paraeducators and equipment that works, maybe a projector with a new light bulb once in a while. I'm also running to be an advocate for our enrichment programs, shop, art, theater, music. They're often the first things on the chopping block when it comes to the budget season, but they're the things that keeps kids engaged and off their phones and away from their vapes. Finally, I'm running because our school district is growing and growing fast. Irene Ryder has 763 students right now, and we're set to clear 1,000 students in the next five years. That's a lot of new faces. And we need to make sure that our schools are a welcoming place for all families, not just those who've been four generations in Whatcom County, but people who just got here and want to dive in and make our schools even wonderful. So that's why I'm running. That's my vision for Meridian, Meridian and I'm excited to be here. And Ms. Simmons, would you like to answer the question, Ms. Simmons? Yes. Uh well, again, my name is Michelle Simmons, and I am running um, as a fourth generation Meridian alumni uh, with, uh, you know, 40, 50 family members uh, going through each of the buildings. I have connections on each of our campuses, whether it be uh, staff members, administration, families. I understand the culture of and the challenges of each of our campuses. Um, and I, I, I do agree that we are asking more of our teachers. And we need to have support available for a changing landscape for our children. Our kids are not going to the same Meridian that I went to or Corey went to or any other uh, member. This is a new world for our kids. They have immediate access to information, yet we're seeing a decrease in attendance. We're seeing a decrease in graduation rates. We're seeing it, you know, our 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 standards are substandard. We aren't even meeting 50% of state standard. We need to reassess and start holding accountability, uh, teaching kiddos that they can take personal responsibility for their success and have people to walk beside them every step of the way. Um, and so I do think we do need a revamp on how we're 
we're doing this one size fits all with our kids because it's not working. Kids aren't meeting standard, kids aren't thriving, they aren't feeling a sense of belonging, and it's our, our duty on the school board to look at our policies and make needed changes so that we can see that happen. Well, the second question actually hopefully will tease out a little bit more about what you each of you meant to say in the first question, which is, are there particular issues motivating you to serve on the school board and why are these issues important to you? And we'll start with you, Ms. Simmons. Yes, absolutely. I have a reason for running. Um, I've been approached by multiple community members who actually asked me to run, uh, looking for changes over their concerns of how the, the district was being or is being managed. This includes our academics. This includes our curriculum standards. This includes the curricul curriculum that's being approved. And I am here to, to advocate for families to continue to have a voice to decrease anxieties with our children and the conflicts they may have between what they're being taught at school and what they're being taught at home. I do believe parents are the first educators and that needs to be respected. I want to see strength in families, encouraged families, partnership with families so that we can produce well-educated children who are prepared for a diverse world to go out and, and be citizens in. Um, they're only here with us for a short amount of time but we also need to acknowledge Meridian is only made up of 65% or 64% white population. We also have many different populations that do have different beliefs, values, faiths than we do. And we need to honor those as well. And what I've learned is a lot of those other families are coming from strong backgrounds that are historically conservative. And we need to appreciate where they're at and walk them through these processes as well. And I've also learned that they aren't necessarily comfortable speaking with administration. And Mr. Sweeney, how would you like to answer the question? So I talked a little bit about you know, what I'm excited to work on, supporting our teachers, enrichment programs, and making sure our district is a welcoming place for all. Because as my opponent mentioned, we've got a diverse population out here in Meridian. Um, I, I heard one of our principals describe Laurel as a state of mind rather than a physical location. And that is that is very true. Um, expanding upon that a bit, um, I think one of the biggest challenges that I'm looking forward to tackling is, is our growth. Our school district is growing. Meridian is a place where people want to be and where they're proud to bring their kids. And that involves planning for the future. We're looking at uh, a, a second elementary school and uh, rebuilding our middle school. And that's going to require trust from the community, buy-in on, on what that looks like, and clear communication. Uh, my, my public career has been one as a communicator. I, I worked for the city of Ferndale for many years as their communications officer and community organizer uh, for their recreation program. So I know how important it is to bring people together of different backgrounds, different faiths, different beliefs, and, and find that common ground. And what can be more common than supporting our children as, as we, we nurture them and get them ready for the, for the big world. So that's the sort of stuff I'm excited about. That's what I'm looking forward to working on on the school board. And Mr. Culp, what issues are motivating you to serve on the school board? There's one great issue that's motivating me and that's kids. I'm here for the kids. Um, I am the Meridian Youth Sports Director. I help out with multiple coaching positions and I'm here for the kids and I'm here for my community. I feel like this is the next step in my leadership to that I can serve as part of this community. I feel like people trust me. Um, I feel like I can be the person that they can come to and I can help get things done in the school board that our community wants and needs. Um, this is a community I grew up in, this community I love. I when I had kids, I, there was zero doubt in my mind what school they were going to. I brought them back because this community raised me, and I'm here to help do the same for other kids. Okay, the next question is, um, under what circumstances, if any, would you support a book being banned from your district's libraries? And we'll start with you, Mr. Culp. How would you like to answer that? 
Well, I would have to see what it was. I mean, if it has graphic material in it. I mean, I, I think a lot of times we take these things, a broad brush, brush to these things. I, I like to take stuff as a case-by-case -case basis. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you if I would agree with the book being banned or not, but if you showed it to me and you gave me a specific book and said, and, and I saw what it was, then yes, I could give you, if it had pornography or other sorts of things that I didn't think that was age appropriate. And my community didn't, my, my community felt that this book shouldn't be in our libraries. I have, I would be willing to go to bat for that. And Mr. Sweeney? Well, let's start with the fact that this is not currently a challenge in the Meridian School District. I actually did a public records request to see if anyone had asked at any point in the last six years for a book to be banned and in the Meridian School libraries. And the answer is no. Nobody had sent an email. Nobody had made a request. It's not something that we're currently confronting. That said, I love libraries. I'm currently joining you from the Bellingham Central Library. Uh, I've, I've long been a library supporter. And one of the best things that we can have to help us navigate those sort of issues is certified librarians. Right now, we don't have certified librarians in our, in our elementary, middle, and high school. And that's something that I'd like to see. Because when you have people who spend every day working with kids and helping connect them with the resources that they need, the resources they might not get at home, but that they need to grow, then having a certified librarian help make that choice and help, help them navigate those issues is exactly the right person. So, uh, I, that's where I come down on it, is that uh, I want to see our our librarians engaged in the process um, and that this is not currently an issue with our school district. Uh, and Ms. Simmons. So actually, our librarians have been proposed with books that they choose not to place in our libraries. Um, but I think when you start to ban books or any mat other materials, in their entirety, it's a slippery slope. We don't have the same uh, standard set in reading materials because there are so many produced on a yearly basis as opposed to what you see for parental guidance in movies and music and, and some of those other things. So again, speaking of what Riley said, it is up to our librarians and we do have markings on our books that do say that the age that they suggested they would be appropriate for. However, Again, we know from the diversity in our, our buildings that what may be age appropriate for a certain family is not going to be age appropriate for another family. I would love to see ready available access simply through our Skyward accounts where we can see uh, book titles that are available to our children and we can simply click, nope, 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 I, I don't particularly want my child to, to access that book or something where parents still have input on what their child is taking out and bringing home. For Meridian, they also have access to the, the Wacom Public Library System. So they have access to every book printed, uh, basically, and our librarians work to get those materials into our students' hands. And so if a parent isn't completely engaged, they may not know this. Well, thank you to each of you. And our next question touches on something that each of you mentioned. Uh, as we opened our conversation this evening, and it has to do with absentee, the absentee rate. The New York Times recently reported student absenteeism post-COVID has soared. In Meridian, OSPI reports that 66.5% of its students regularly attended school. In fact, every school district in Whatcom County except Linden is below the state attendance average of 67.2%. Now, with your answer, I'd ask for you to be specific. What specific policies would you propose to improve school attendance in your district? And we'll start with you, Ms. Simmons. What you can see from our OSP, uh, OSPI scorecard also is our, um, our, our title schools, our resources situations. We have uh, children who live in poverty, homelessness uh, in our district. Uh, I do advocate for some kind of one-on-one -on -one support with each of our kiddos. Again, I don't think the one-size-fits-all approach is successful. We need to know what the needs of our students are and how we can help meet those needs. 
Um, if a children is hungry, they are not, not learning. If a children, if a child doesn't have resources to get to school, they are not learning. If they don't have someone at home assisting them in getting ready for school or helping them manage their time, they're not making it to school on time or they're missing the bus and there isn't other transportation to school. Uh, I don't think it's a simple solution. I think it's going to take a lot of getting to the root cause for each of our families in the different regions of our district to see how we can best support them to get our students to school. And from my private sector in human resources and business development, I know happy, engaged team members come to work. So are our kids happy and engaged? Do they have resource conflicts? We don't know until we dig deep and find out those answers and get them back into our schools. We do know families aren't choosing Meridian, so what else is to the story? Our, our, our enrollment is flat and we've actually lost multiple families to other educational resources. Mr. Sweeney. Well, I, I agreed with a lot that Michelle just said there. Uh, a hungry kid doesn't learn. A kid who's not safe doesn't learn. And that's, and that's just the facts. And when you start looking at those systemic issues, uh, you know, that, that paints a, a broader picture about what's going on. Uh, for those Meridian families that are watching, I really urge you, if you know someone who needs some help or you're a family that needs some help, get in touch with the Meridian Family Support Center. It's right next to Irene Ryther. They do a great job and they've got some of those extra pieces to help make things a little easier. Um, in terms of how do we boost absenteeism, engaging the parents is step one, right? So engaged, connected uh, community is one that wraps their arms around the kids and helps make sure that they make it to school and that they're engaged in their learning. You know, some, some, some kids show up and they're not engaged, right? Um, and then, you know, I, I go back to, you know, uh, being an advocate for enrichment programs. I know some kids who the only reason why they showed up at school was because of their after school club where they got to see a couple of people that they liked. And by golly, that's what got them through sophomore year of high school. Right. I know a lot of people who experience that. And I think that as long as we keep, you know, especially in post pandemic, providing those opportunities for kids to interact face by face and, and make those connections, then we can keep them engaged and hopefully keep them showing up. It's going to take all of us, parents, teachers, staff, student groups doing all we can to tackle this issue. And, and I look forward to working on it on the school board. And Mr. Culp. I, I agree with both Riley and Michelle. I, I think uh, I I really was glad Riley said what he said about the extracurricular activities because I I I 100% agree with what he says, um, and I also agree it's not a it's a case by case basis. We need to get dig down deep and figure out why why these kids are some kids are not able to come to school. What's keeping them from coming to school and giving them the resources and helping them out in any way we can to, uh, as a school board and as a community to get, get them in more involved and feel safe and wanting to come and learn. So our next question um, is uh, an important one, which has to do with money. Um, and earlier this year, the Mount Baker superintendent reported that the district was facing a $3 million budget cut. This is an issue facing all districts in our county due to the end of COVID funding, increased costs, levy lids, and a decline in student enrollment. What would you as a school district board member do to ensure adequate funding for the district? And we'll start with you, Mr. Culp. Well, the first thing I do is find people smarter than me to uh, give me ideas on what we can do. Um, once I, once we figure that, that out, we go to the community and we see what kind of um, bonds and other things that we need. And also there's probably stuff that we can cut. There's probably some fat in there somewhere that we might have to make tough decisions on. And and maybe have to cut uh, something here or there. So, you know, with everything in COVID, you know, a lot of people, we got a lot of um, funding and we kind of ballooned ourselves and now we might have to take a step back. Uh, thank you. And uh, Mr. Sweeney. Well, 
for Meridian School District, not Mount Baker, but for Meridian School District, we are we are solvent. We are not looking at a budget deficit uh, next year. Um, and part of that was because we made smart investments during the pandemic. We took our CARES money and we bought some portables. Well, we supported the portables. We got them at a day. Anyway, the point is we, we made investments in infrastructure uh, rather than hiring staff. And that, that was a really smart call and, and good work on the, the school board and our superintendent for making those choices. Um, moving forward, obviously, we've got a big bond that's going to come up, and that requires the, the public's trust and communication with the public uh, and some accountability, and that's going to be really important. Um, but as a school board member, one of the best things that we provide is fiscal oversight, right? So we make sure that the, the district's finance officer isn't embezzling $1.8 million and running off to Minnesota or something, right? Like we're, we're keeping an eye on the books and making sure that everything is, is as it should be, that expenses are, are moderate and, and appropriate, that we're making the smart investments, that we're not being a penny wise pound foolish. Right. And we're looking at those long term goals so that we can make sure that our school district isn't facing a year to year roller coaster, but steady, reliable, trustworthy um, investment in our kids. And so I'm looking forward to being part of that process. And Ms. Simmons. Well, I have been fortunate enough to look at spending and participate in a lot of long term planning for Meridian, including the, the strategic plan, the five year plan for Meridian and the facilities task force, because we do have aging facilities and we need to make some hard decisions, um, which will be ultimately up to the community. Um, but I do believe with our 19, you know, 17,000 per student, uh, we need to be fiscally responsible, have think tanks, as, as Corey had mentioned. Uh, there is fat that can be trimmed. Uh, where are we at in comparison to some of our other districts as it, as it is with, uh, you know, are we administrative top heavy? I don't know. I would that would take a think tank. Are we responsible with our resources with children taking tablets back and forth for uh, home and all the replacement costs with our tablets when other districts are having kids leave their tablets at home? Like I, I think we need to be mindful that we don't have all the answers that we can learn from districts, find out what is working in other districts, what we can implement with Meridian, um, but that is uniquely for Meridian. Um, and, and I believe in grassroots 100%. These are the kids that have been entrusted to us. We have extremely generous uh, community members, multiple business owners. Um, I'm speaking with those folks consistently. Um, and uh, if we have a need and they're in a situation where they trust uh, the school board, as Riley had said, and the direction of the school, um, I, I have absolute faith in Meridian to do the right thing for our children and future generations. Well, the next question is more or less an offshoot of that. In Lately in the news, uh, the problem with fully funding special education in the state of Washington has been headlines. And we know that special education programs are vital for students with diverse needs. How do you plan specifically to support and improve these programs in our district? And we'll start with you, Ms. Simmons. Well, I can tell you from Facilities Task Force that we actually have a building that our students with uh, physical limitations cannot maneuver independently, and it does require a one-on-one -on -one assistance. Um, so that's a no-brainer. We need to provide environments where our children can thrive and feel independent and feel like they're they're living their best life. Um, and then I do think we're seeing more and more children come in with more needs. We're seeing uh, increases in uh, the special needs with physical needs, diabetic, mental health, there's so much. Um, and, and we need to work together, eat together, even if it's in a cooperative environment or think outside the box on how we can get the funding for our students. Is, is there a cooperative measure we can do with other districts? Is there something we can do with um, special groups with funding, grants, uh, whatever it can do to get kids what they need to become independent or their level of independence when they're ready to leave us. Mr. Sweeney. I'm gonna agree with, with most of what Michelle said. Accessibility is a huge issue. And as we look at our facilities over the next five years, that I'm gonna take a keen eye towards, you know, accesses and egresses and all that fun stuff. Um, you know, our, our students need to be supported. 
uh, and, and special ed often gets the short shift. Um, it's, it's federally required and it's the right thing to do. So, you know, uh, the Bellingham School District has really stepped up their uh, support for special ed students uh, over the last five, 10 years. And so I'd love to crib some of their notes. Um, and, and I think that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, support, building trust and engaging the community. Uh, so, you know, we've got some some great uh, uh, people who help connect uh, graduating students with life skills and future job opportunities. I know there's some wonderful nonprofits in the area, and I just want to continue to build those partnerships. And Mr. Culp, how would you like to answer? Um, I agree with, once again, I agree with Michelle and Riley. Um, I, think, I think looking at the way other school districts are handling these situations, is a great is a great tool for us. Um, I think once again we have to look at our bonds and we have to go to our community and see say where can where can we help? Where can we find the help? You know, because these we we have to get it done. So these are things that we just have to um think tank and and just um yeah. Think tank and talk to the community. Okay, so um, each of you are aware that teacher recruitment and retention can be challenging. What specific steps would you take to attract and retain high quality educators in the district? And with this, we'll start with Mr. Culp. Be specific, please. Well, I would like to hear from teachers what is the reason why we wouldn't be attractive. Um, it, is it our pay? Is it our community? Is it the staff? Are the administrators? I would like to get down to the meat of it and see what what would entice a, a teacher to come to to us to our school and. I would like to see, I, I believe that there are some teachers that we have lost that were good teachers. And I would like to talk to them and see what would have changed the situation. Why, why did they leave? And what can I do as a school board member to make it so that doesn't happen, keep happening? And Mr. Sweeney. So there's there's some some low hanging fruit and some some deeper systemic issues. First, you know, we keep changing the curriculum, changing the administrative requirements on teachers, so they're spending more time shuffling paperwork than working with kids, and that's you know that's the first challenge that that we want to do away with. But I think a big thing that we're seeing, especially this year, is the infusion of national politics into our educational environment. Uh, while I appreciate a lot of things about my opponent, she she came to the school board ready to complain about critical race theory, which is not a thing that we teach at Meridian School District. And so if I'm a teacher in the Meridian School District, I'm I'm worried that the school board is going to be going through all my curriculum with a fine tooth comb. And maybe I said just the wrong thing in this one lesson. And now I'm getting hauled before the school board. More national politics is the last thing we need from our school board members. And so part of why I'm running is to help protect our teachers from the, the petty partisans of today. And that's and, and so if we can take that off the table, if we can keep, keep the national political discourse out of our classrooms, then our teachers can get back to doing what they love, teaching. And I, I, I'm excited to make that happen, which I think I've said like 16 times this forum. I'm sorry, it's repetitive. Ms. Simmons. Thank you. Um, for me, uh, with my business background, people don't typically leave a job, right? They leave management, they leave culture, they leave something else. Um, and so what part of that conversation are we missing and not having? Are we performing really transparent, engaged exit surveys? Are we finding out why our teachers are leaving? Are they burnt out because they don't have enough support staff? Well, we need to work at getting the support staff in those classrooms. Are they leaving? Uh, because as Riley said, we have management changes so frequently at IRE. There's always a new expectation coming out every time there's a new leader in the building because basically they're managing that building. Their desires for and outcomes are changing every, every two to three years uh, in that building. And I know that can be very, very challenging. 
Um, and we did lose some teachers uh, because of curriculum changes that they weren't necessarily, you know, willing to take the risk of being forced to teach. They just didn't agree with it. Um, and I've, I've spoken with those teachers directly. Um, so that's where I'm at. It's, it's multifaceted. It's going to take hard conversations. It's going to take someone who wants to get to the end goal of complete, you know, job satisfaction, where you have the tools to be successful, you have the environment to be successful, and you have the support to be successful. And I think that's how we keep children. And this is close to my heart because my daughter is uh, master's in education, secondary mathematics. She's out in this workforce. Thank you. And uh, each of you have expressed a lot of uh, concern and desire to support the children. And we know that bullying and student safety are often concerns in our schools. How would you work to create a safe and inclusive learning environment for all of our students? And please be as specific as you can with your answers. And we'll start with Ms. Simmons. For me, it's always been classrooms that are free of any content that's not necessarily about the subject matter they're learning. Um, previously, I didn't have, when I went to school or, or generations before I went to school, I didn't know the polit political affiliations or anything about my teacher. And now you probably do know more. Um, and then there's, there's conversations that are in, interjected into the classroom even though it may or may not be deliberate, it's happening um, to the point where there were such concerns that, that we did communicate with Sheriff Elfo about some of the things that were being taught in a, in a class, law and society that we thought may become, uh, ex have exposure for harm to our children had they actually act on what, what they were, acted on what they were being taught that day. Uh, so we do wanna keep it to the basics of education, producing critical thinkers, um, that feel safe, regardless of any of their written classes or un, unspecified uh, classes, social, economic, orientation, uh, whatever, they're there to learn. And they're there to learn in a village that loves and supports them. Uh, and we need to hold the children who are not doing this accountable for their actions. And there needs to be consequences. You need to learn consequences, consequences now. When you're under the age of 18, our consequences in the real world look much, much more different. And we need parent support in that. And uh, Mr. Sweeney. So when you're talking about bullying, I think we need to start with the parents, right? Because they set the tone for the kids. I know that uh, our school district put out a post, a pretty mundane post acknowledging Pride Month uh, back in June, and they had to shut the whole post down because of hateful homophobic comments, not from students, but from parents, Meridian parents. We can do so much better. And that starts with setting the tone on the school board to ensure that we have a welcoming place for all families, that, uh, and that trickles all the way down to the staff, the teachers, and the students. So. Absolutely, we, we need to be setting an example and we need to be engaging with our kids to make sure that they are, they are feel welcome and loved and supported because um, you know, bullying doesn't happen in a vacuum and, and uh, that's where I would start, is with the parents. And Mr. Culp. Accountability and parent involvement. If, uh, if I find out that my son is bullying somebody, um, I'm going to come to the school and we're going to take care of it. We're going to get to the root cause. Um, nobody should be bullied. I don't necessarily agree with what Riley's statement about the homophobic um, Meridian families, but um, I think that a lot of that stuff, like Michelle said, we, we, we got all these politics surrounding our kids. They don't, they don't know which way to turn. So I think they need to focus on schooling and treating each other with respect. So, and that begins, like Riley said, with the parents. And I think, I think that our community does a very good job as parents policing our kids in the bullying department. The next question is graduation rates and academic achievement vary among different student populations. What is your plan to address these disparities and improve overall student outcomes? Again, try to be specific. And we'll start with you, Mr. Culp. 
Once again, I, I would take this as a case by case basis and we need to, to get to the root cause of what kids, what groups of kids are, are failing and figure out why and what resources we can push to go to these failing kids. Um, and once again, we have to be accountable. We have to uh, hold the parents accountable. We have to hold the community accountable. We have to hold the staff and administration accountable. And uh, Mr. Sweeney. So uh, some of it are the systemic issues that we talked about early, poverty, hunger, uh, drug use, all those are big challenges that affect our graduation rate. One of the great projects that can help is our skill center that we're working on developing uh, in the Meridian School District campus. Uh, it would provide at start four programs that would uh, give our students real life career skills, pathways to, to careers that we need to fill in Whatcom County, childcare, um, fire safety, welding, right? Real important skill gaps that we have and that would give them on the job sort of training right there with our trades, and it would be a huge step forward for our community. So I, I know for some of the students in terms of graduation rates, they can't see a light at the end of the tunnel, right? School is endless and difficult and they just cannot get there. But to give them a glimpse of what life will be and that it gets better and that there, there's a job waiting for you and a great career, that can make a huge difference towards getting those kids over the hump and finishing to the finish line. Um, I, I want to involve our trades, our local trades more in, in the high school arena. It's part of the reason why I've been endorsed by the pipe fitters, uh, Local 26, um, because we need to, to show pathways to careers and in doing so help catch some of those kids who fall through the cracks. And Ms. Simmons. I believe Meridian students would benefit from a, a structured uh, mentoring program. Uh, our, our student counselors are, are maxed out uh, helping kids navigate um, graduation requirements and credit retrievals and things like that. And a mentoring program may be able to bridge the gap. Um, but I also believe that through a mentoring program or other community advocacy type group, we could be encouraging kids to dream big and to live in hope. Um, I see with our mental health that some of that has diminished with our kids. Um, we're busy checking boxes with college ready and and your plan for your future. Well, how many how many freshmen know what they want to do when they're 23? You know, we're, we're checking the boxes and taking classes for something they may have zero interest in later on in life. Um, and so let's actually walk with these children one on one, somehow find the resources to do that and and encourage them. You don't have to go to a four-year university. You can go to the, the skill center. We actually have students participating in that now. They go down to Skagit County. I'm actually a speaker for uh, for that in, uh, that uh, particular program, um, but it will be great having it on our own campus or availability in our campus. But what do we do for today's student? Because that's not gonna be ready for five years, three to five years. What can we do today? We can mentor and encourage and get them on a, a plan that gets them employable at graduation. All of you are aware that Meridian is a county school district and contains none of the county cities. Well, what do you see are the challenges um, that this poses um, in supporting the holistic development of our students, including their physical and mental well-being? And with these challenges, how, how would you address the challenges? Um, what are your thoughts about this? And we'll start with you, Ms. Simmons. Well, um, many, many years ago, I actually did a community event on the 100 years uh, of Meridian, focusing how we have managed to keep ourselves a county school, not being annexed into a Bellingham district, a Linden district, or an Everson district. Um, people fought for their county school. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people choose Meridian, uh, is because it's uniquely different than other schools. The hindrance to that is that we don't have a lot of industry to, to, to gain resources from financially to support additional funding and, and activities for our children. So we have to be more creative. Um, and that being said is where we go back to everything takes money. Everything takes a resource, a, a time resource, a financial resource. And how can we work together as a community to find that for our kids? Um, and I would, I would like to see uh, more grassroots efforts, uh, additional uh, 
families getting engaged with where the school is now and what our plans for the future are, uh, really taking some ownership of our county school um, because we don't have a city or someone directing us. Um, it is our school um, and, and we choose to keep it that way. And Mr. Sweeney. So making sure that our schools are a welcoming place for all is, is one of the central tenets of my campaign. It's something that I am, I am passionate about and believe in. You know, uh, other school districts have cities where people can gather. We've got two roads. So our schools by default are our community gathering places. They're where we come together and connect, which face to face, which is more important than ever because of the pandemic. So um, in terms, so we want to make sure that people feel, feel welcome and supported. Sorry about that. <laughs> I got to go check out my book before this all ends. I've made my point. I'm going to mute because this is a mess. Thank you. All right. Not the issue. Uh, well, okay, Mr. Culp. I, um, can you answer? Can you make some of the question again, please? I'd be happy to. <laughs> Meridian is a county school district and contains none of the county cities. What are the challenges that? come from this in supporting the holistic development of our students, including their physical and mental well-being? And how would you plan to address these challenges? Uh, I don't really take it as a challenge. I take it as a sense of pride. I I love the fact that our, we're the little town of Laurel. I love the fact that we can go out there on a Friday night and put Laurel on the map. It's something that we as alumni have grown up to to just cherish that fact that we are a little community. And, but what we do is, as uh, Riley, Riley and Michelle were saying, we have great grassroots here. Every year I go around for our youth football and I, I barely even have to ask people for sponsors. They are jumping at the chance to help out our school. And that's, that's the thing about our community. We just come together and it's the best community that I've ever been a part of. So our next question is, um, how do you plan to respond to parents who want specific changes in the school curriculum? And we'll start with you, Mr. Culp. Well, I, would, I take it as a case by case basis, like I've been saying for the most of this time. There's a, there's a lot of things that I don't know. There's a lot of things that, you know, somebody's going to come to me and ask me, can we change this? Can we change that? And what I'm going to, what I, what I'm promising to do is if this is something that's strong in our community, I'm willing to do the, the, the work to, to figure out what, if anything, we can do legally, because there's certain things we can't, we can't do as a school board. It, there's state laws. We can't, we can't, in, um, we have to we have to follow. I think, uh, for example, the sex ed class that we took. I think that as a community, there was things that our school board passed that we didn't want, and I don't think they had to pass the certain curriculum that they did. So I am here willing to look, listen to the community, and do the, the groundwork to figure out what my community wants and legally. By the state law, I have to. We have to do. And Mr. Sweeney. So, if somebody is coming to me with specific concerns about a curriculum, step one, of course, is to listen. Right, that's your job as an elected official, and I take that seriously. I'd want to hear their concerns and and where that's coming from. Is it discomfort because it's something that they don't want their specific kid learning, or is it is there something deeply wrong and dysfunctional with the curriculum or how it was handled, right? So if it's just a personal discomfort, I'm I'm on a curriculum that has been vetted and approved by our educators. I'm I'm less sympathetic. But if it's something where we've dropped the ball, we it was poorly implemented. It was wrong. It was, you know, incorrect. Then let's then let's do what we can to fix it. That that seems pretty straightforward. And Ms. Simmons, well, I was there for um, 
when the comprehensive sex education uh, was implemented at Meridian. And in my personal opinion, um, we had the opportunity to make changes or choices in the curriculum that would have would have potentially suited Meridian better had we taken a different approach in doing our research um, and finding what actually was a better fit for our community. Um, again, we took a chunk of curriculum that was easy uh, rather than finding mi mix and match and pieces of curriculum that would meet the stand state mandates. Um, again, trying the one size fits all uh, option for education. Um, I do agree with uh, Corey when uh, he states that uh, the state mandates and everything like that, I agree. There's only so much the school board can do, but we can also allocate resources to parents who do want to find other means to meet the state requirement with curriculum. And I have talked to parents who did this regarding comprehensive sex education, but it took so much of their time and energy. Parents without the resources wouldn't be able to do that. So what can we do as a district to maybe assist in that, to help parents find curriculum that they're more comfortable with based on what's in there being taught in their home? Because I do respect uh, what parents say, and I will be sympathetic to what they're saying. And Mr. Sweeney, you have a challenge. So Michelle Simmons, you led the charge against the comprehensive sex ed curriculum, which helps keep our kids safe from sex predators, is medically accurate and age appropriate. So I guess my question is, what specifically do you object to about the curriculum besides simply discomfort that kids are learning something that you're not comfortable with? Well, as a parent, I can be uncomfortable and want something different for my child. And I'm going to advocate for parents like myself. Um, where they aren't seeing some of the explicit materials and what I think is age appropriate, you may think, I may think is not age appropriate, but you may think it is. And that's where we differ. And so I want to have the parent choice to decide what my child learns in that respect. And resources from the school would be helpful to find other alternatives that are, are less graphic or, or showing photos or what may be happening based on grade level. So um, I think for our final question this evening, um, we all have recognized that the district encompasses a diverse community. How will you ensure that all students, regardless of their background, have access to an equitable and quality education and your specific ideas on this point? And we'll start with you, Ms. Simmons. Thank you. Um, I, I do believe that we are falling short on our connection to families. Um, I think we're putting the invitation out there and then we're not doing anything because they aren't showing up. Uh, and this is and I don't think we're doing enough. I think we need one on one one. I would love to see a, a community ambassador type program where we're walking beside families when they come when they're new to Meridian. And we're kind of teaching them, well, here's your connection here. Here's your connection there. Um, it, it's it's understanding the culture of Meridian and who you talk to and where you go to. Uh, and not all um, all families are comfortable going to the, the Family Service Center, which I do think is a great resource. I, and it had a lot of uh, impact when it was at the Laurel Church. Um, or there's a pride thing, or they they say they say I can't talk to the the administrator, I can't talk to the principal. That's the principal, because the country where they have come from, it's they're they're held in such high regard that they're not approachable. So that's where some nor you know some parent like myself or Riley or Corey can walk alongside this parent and get them connected as a resource. Uh, so that they feel like they belong, so that their child feels like they belong, so that they first stop, step into a PTA meeting, they already have somebody they know. I do a buddy program at work. It, it has great impact with just that sense of belonging. Um, and that's what I want to see for all kids, uh, that this is a place for you, and we love you. And uh, Mr. Sweeney. Well, I just want to build on what Michelle said. I think that, um, you know, empowering and connecting with the parents is the is the silver bullet for this. So we have a, a growing Punjabi population in Meridian. And 
I think that we should be at the Vasaki celebration every year. Meridian should have a booth there and be connecting with parents. I think that we have should have more materials in languages other than English to make sure that we're reaching those folks. And yes, buddy, in-person outreach, community events are so important. Um, you know, the PTA, uh, Irene Ryder, puts on a skate night and a movie night and all these great things where you see people coming together across cultures, across communities and making those connections because they have so much in common now. When you have a school district in common, you have a place and people that you all share. You have that shared experience. And you know, as, as things can get tense over things like the sex ed curriculum or na other national politics issues that come dribbling down into our school district, having that shared experience as fellow neighbors and human beings is gonna be absolutely vital for, for just our whole community as we grow together. So I think that it's gonna take time, it's gonna take effort, and it's gonna take passion for making sure that everyone is welcome at our schools. And Mr. Culp. I agree with Michelle and Riley. We need to have more community outreach. We need to get find ways to, not because not everybody wants to just go to the football games. Not everybody wants to just, we, we need to find more avenues for us, to reach out to our community. I try to do as much as I can with the kids, and that in turn um, leads me to meet a lot of different parents. And I just think we continue to create more opportunities as a community to get together and, and just be open. And I'm a little shy sometimes, so when I first meet you, I might, I'm a little shy, but uh, you know what? like most of the people in this community they will accept you with open arms we just need to get out there and feed the street well thank you uh to each of you candidates for your willingness to serve and your participation in tonight's forum you now have the opportunity to make a one minute closing statement and uh candidate uh Cul uh Culp, we will oh excuse me that's incorrect Candidate Simmons, we will begin with you. Thank you. Um, I'm I'm asking for my uh, community to to vote Michelle. Um, I, I do believe I I have the background and the experience uh, to bring some insight to the board position, to love and support our students to success, to encourage our teachers to to be engaged and approachable in their classrooms that's something we saw in our survey that students felt was missing um i just i just want to be a tool and a resource uh in my community to make things better uh, and that's strengthening families that's uh educated well-rounded critical thinking students um and that's also just creating a sense of community a community that is very uniquely laurel mr sweeney Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Riley Sweeney, and I'm running for Meridian School Board. Um, thank you for spending the last hour with us. As you can see, you know the, the things that unite us are, are far more than the things that divide us. My opponent and I have very different perspectives on some issues, but we're both passionate about making our school district an even better place, about connecting with our families, and making sure that our teachers have the tools to, to do what they do best, which is teach. So, uh, I, I'm running for school board. It, it comes down to a matter of priorities. I'm running for school board to support teachers, advocate for enrichment activities, and make sure that our school district is a welcoming place for all. If you want to learn more about me, you can find out at SweeneyForSchoolBoard.com, or you can find me on all the social medias. Um, just look for Jay Riley Sweeney from Meridian School, school Board. I'd love to talk to you. My phone number's on my website. Give me a call. I'm happy to chat. Um, and I, remember to vote. November 7th, get those ballots turned in. Thank you much. And Mr. Culp, your closing statement. And Corey Culp, I, uh, I really appreciate you hearing, uh, letting me speak to you guys tonight. Um, I am, I have three kids in this community and I have grown up in this community. This community raised me. I'm here to bring back um, strong family values, accountability, and I, I I ask that if you see me on the street and you've never met me before, please come up and ask. Please come up and introduce yourself to me, and let's let's talk about what are some of the issues that you guys see out there that I don't see. And I let's let's work together and let's make 
Let's keep Meridian great. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, I thank uh, I thank the candidates for being here today and for their willingness to serve us uh, by running for public office. Voters can find more information about the candidates online at vote411.org and in your voter pamphlet. Ballots will be mailed October 18th of this year. Your ballot must be postmarked or in a ballot drop box before 8 o'clock p.m. on November 7th of this year and please remember to sign the ballot envelope and if mailing by postal service we recommend mailing early thank you to all who participated this evening and good evening